All right. Um, we have six of us, and I haven't heard of anyone else who's definitely coming. Um, let's see. I guess we'll go ahead and start. Thanks, Sean. Welcome everyone to the Bristol Energy Committee, August 19th. Um, today we have a guest with us, and that's um, Brad Long, who is from VEIC. He's going to be giving a presentation in a little bit. Um, we have uh, a bunch of, not a bunch, but we have a number of testimonies, but no one wanted to come and actually read them. So we are going to take turns reading them here so that the re they'll be recorded and um, just not by the actual people who had the work done. Um, we'll do that first just as a kind of uh, a beginning to anyone who might be listening to this um, later on just to share a little bit of what people have experienced through weatherization and then brag a lot about um, and um, what we can do to move the button up along and what the incentives are, especially right now. So um, uh, let's go ahead and start with some testimonies. These, some of these were collected over the last few years and then revised a little bit just recently to add anything new that people were experiencing in their homes or any new work that they've done. We have, um, uh, let's see, we have actually, we have one from Richard and he is actually going to be able to speak it himself because he's here and, um, and then we have some others. So Richard, do you want to start off? Okay. Can you hear me? Can yep. you hear me? Okay. Uh, maybe everyone should, maybe everyone should mute except Richard so that we have it mm -hmm. pretty clear. Okay, um, we live on East Street and um, we bought our 1850 home in 2012 and had an energy audit. We followed up with ceiling and insulation work over the next five years. We installed a small wood stove, a hybrid water heater, uh, six replacement windows, a mini split heat pump, and I'll say parenthetically, we've installed the second heat pump. Um, and we have solar panels uh, on the roof. Uh, our oil use declined over 50% in 2017. And our solar production covered the increase in electric use. Our home is now less drafty. The first level floors are warmer and the wood stove and heat pump are cozy warming spots in the winter. The hybrid water heater dehumidifies the basement and the heat pumps provide AC in the summer. Equally satisfying is to be reducing fossil fuel use as well. I'm going to revise this. That's the end of it. I'm going to revise this because since I, I wrote it, we added the second heat pump um, and there's, there's uh, a little more I could say for example, the hybrid hot water heater meant that we could turn off the oil burner uh, during the summer months. And actually, we turn off the oil furnace uh, in April when we don't turn it on again until late November. So it isn't being used to heat water as it was in the past, which was a very inefficient way to do it. So uh, that's basically our story. Great, thanks, Richard. You're welcome. Um, let's see, uh, Stephen, did you want to um, tell us about uh, the the one with the uh, window dressers and uh, that is? Yeah. Um, yep. Hang on, let me um, see. see if I can yeah. pull it pull it up. Oh, 
Okay. Um, speaking for Peggy Chatelaine on West Pleasant Street, uh, she writes, several years ago, we had an energy audit and did some insulating ourselves. We hired help for additional work. As a result, our upstairs has been so much toastier in the winter and we save a lot on our fuel oil and wood bills. Last year, we ordered inserts from window dressers Four of our windows had been collecting condensation and we were concerned about the frames rotting. The insulating inserts solved the problem. In a north facing office, one window insert made a big difference in the comfort of that space. And in the bedroom, a large insert for the skylight over the bed made it so much warmer. We got a $100 rebate from Efficiency Vermont for the eight window inserts that we ordered and are so glad we did it. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see, maybe I'll go ahead and read um, one of these. Let's see. This one is Bob Donis's house on um, Maple Street, Bob and Phoebe. Um, we had an audit eight years ago and hired a contractor to seal and insulate the attic and seal a door and a window in the basement and seal a couple main floor doors with flexible tape. We got uh, $2,500 off in Efficiency Vermont rebates. The house is warmer and less dry in the winter and we no longer have to use a humidifier. It's cool in the summer so we got rid of our air conditioners. Two friends used our home for a month when we were away and they were so appreciative of how, how cool it was. Some other changes that I'm really grateful for are carrying less bags of wood pellets in the winter, no refilling a humidifier, more silence since the furnace and the pellet stove are no longer turning on as often, no need to install and remove air conditioners, air conditioners each summer and fall. Um, we're definitely saving on heating costs. Pellet bags are reduced by a third and oil by a third. We aren't using electricity for air conditioning or, humidi or the humidifier, so our electric bill has dropped. We're at the point where the savings have made up for the cost of the work, and it's all gravy now. We're enjoying this significant annual savings. Um, Carl, did you want to read? Sure, I, I, just saw, I just saw your email right before the meeting. Okay. I'd be happy to see the Pine Street one. Yeah, can you see it where yep. you are? Yep. Great, great. Do we know who this is or do they want to not um, be known? Yeah, I mean, when I first, when I first got when I first reached out to them, they said they didn't really want their name on it. So I figured even after revising it, I'd still go with that. Maybe they yeah. don't want their names on it, but yeah. Sure. So this is from a resident of Bristol. Elizabeth. Pine Street couple. Pine Street, yep. Uh, we did our own renovation in 2011 by insulating and residing the house and replacing windows. About seven years ago, we contracted with Bristol Electronics to put solar on our roof and more recently, we had two heat pumps installed by Jackmans. We got rebates from Efficiency Vermont that helped offset the cost. We used to feel guilty about using fossil fuel in the winter. <laughs> now we crank the temperature to 68 instead of 64. It's a relief not to feel guilty all the time about trying to stay warm. We still have our oil furnace for backup and use less than 50 gallons per year. In the summer, the heat pumps powered by the solar panels offer cooling. It feels so good to come into the cool house after working in the garden. Great, thanks. And there's one more that I got just before coming on here from um, Allison Rick over on Maple Street. Would you say that again, Sally? Who it is? Yeah, thanks. Um, Allison Rick. Alice Leeds and Rick Sabalis. So Alice wrote this. Okay. How do you spell the last name? 
L E E D S. Oh, okay. Yeah. Somehow I thought you said something else. Okay. I'm, maybe I need to get closer to the closer or something. No, I'm going to turn on external speaker. Our household chooses to walk back on our carpet. Oh, wait a second. Um, Rich, I wonder if you're speaking to the feedback. Richard, Yeah, I think you're getting a lot of feedback. Yeah, we're getting a lot of feedback. Is that better? Yeah, very well. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. Technology. Um, all right. Let's see, our household chooses to cut back on our carbon footprint while economizing. My husband and I reduce our fuel usage during the cold months by sealing our doors and windows with low cost weather stripping and plastic covering. And we close off unused spaces and keep cold air out of our entryway. We, immediate, we immediately notice a decrease in cool drafts after that. Um, when I shed my coat and shoes at the door, I don donned a sweater and slippers uh, like Mr. Rogers and set the thermostat at 65. After a detailed $100 energy audit, we learned we can further reduce our fuel consumption with more serious insulation of our basement, which we haven't done yet. Uh, we purchase our electricity through Sun Common which has definitely saved us money on electricity. Last winter, we were home more with the thermostat up and we still had a reduction in fuel cost um, by keeping more of the unused areas of the house closed off. It was quite comfortable. So um, that's it. Those are the testimonies we have at this point. And um, so thanks for listening to those. and. I think, um, well, I guess we'll go ahead and um, introduce uh, Brad Long. Sorry, I keep on wanting to call you Dale. Brad Long from VEIC. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what, you're, uh, what you're about to share with us and what you're, whatever you want to share about your background? Sure, sure. thanks. Um, appreciate the opportunity to speak with everybody. Uh, I contacted Sally maybe about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Is that about right, Sally? And um, introduced myself. I, I work for Efficiency Vermont. I am a community engagement manager. And uh, my job, my work is to, um, to work with local uh, towns, energy committees, um, municipalities, um, residents, and, and businesses to uh, help people um, utilize our services and our incentives. Um, I have a, a presentation tonight that offers kind of a quick 101 on what Efficiency Vermont does, who we are, and what our current, some of our current incentives and programs are right now, just a high level view. And um, I would encourage uh, anybody to um, ask me any questions throughout the, the presentation. My contact information will be on one of the last slides, so you can shoot me an email or give me a call. Uh, and I will say, I finished weatherizing my house this past uh, December. And uh, it was a, probably about a two year process. It took me quite a while to do. Um, I did some of it myself. I have a, a dirt floor crawl space with a uh, poured concrete uh, wall and um, basically sealed the floor and um, put some poly iso board on the wall down there and then did some spray foam on the top half and up into the van joist. And um, within I would say two days, the smell of my house changed considerably. It went from that kind of a damp, musty smell to just, I, I don't know, it was, a, it was a new smelling house. Uh, the second step was that we air sealed my, uh, my ceiling spaces. We installed some uh, hardwired carbon monoxide and smoke detectors and a ceiling fan in one of the rooms. 
and uh, blew about 18 inches of cellulose insulation up there. And I will say that on the hot days in the summertime, the house doesn't get nearly as hot. Um, it takes about an extra day before the house warms up compared to what it used to on really hot days. And throughout the winter, uh, three things I noticed. Number one, the floors weren't so cold anymore. Uh, number two, the heat did not run nearly as long as it used to. And number three, which helped stop the house from being so dry. Uh, and then number three, the house would coast better. And by coast, what I mean is once the heat turned off, the heat loss wasn't as great, so the heat didn't have to turn on so quickly to keep the house heated again. Uh, I'll be looking at my, 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 my liquid propane consumption um, this year to get an idea, but I'm gonna guess I probably cut my consumption by about 30%. Um, but aside from the fuel reduction and aside from the kind of doing the right thing by the environment, um, I will say that uh, selfishly, it's the comfort piece that got me. Um, I will, I will do my best to never live in a house again that is not weatherized. It's simply, um, it's such a dramatic difference. Uh, when, with one of the testimonials that you had earlier there, Sally, talked about, you know, the house being cooler and getting rid of dehumidifiers and getting rid of humidifiers and all that kind of stuff. And, um, I turn on, I have a, a portable air conditioner. I used it one night this year, um, after about five or six days and that, 85 to 90 degree zone with no rain and just sun every day. It got uncomfortably humid. Uh, so I used it to kind of cool things off and I used it for one night and that was it. Um, whereas before I'd have a window unit going for, you know, probably a combined 10 nights a year. Um, but it's, it's a dramatic difference. It is, um, it's, it's, a, it's an investment I would encourage people to really consider. And I would encourage people to consider it in multiple steps. Weatherizing a house can be a big thing. It can be a big deal, especially for bigger houses. Um, it's made, maybe not an easy job to do in, in one pass. So that, that's my testimonial for you about weatherizing a house. Um, nice. Yeah, it was, it was really, it was something else. I got to do some of the work myself and uh, I hired a home performance with Energy Star contractor through the uh, network that we have here at Efficiency Vermont. And uh, I utilized our home energy loan program and I utilized uh, some of the other services that we have. And it was, uh, it was a great process. I actually called my own call center to ask questions and uh, the folks <laughs> there answered my questions and helped me out. It was, uh, it was, it was great. I, I tried to look at it from an outside in perspective and um, it worked out pretty well. I liked it. You know, that's, that's what they say. Uh, doctors ought to all suffer the, the maladies that they're trying to heal. Yeah. So that was, that was a good thing. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I, I'm interested in homes. I'm interested in the technology. I'm interested in, you know, the concept of convection and all that kind of stuff. And um, I just wanted to do it myself. My floors were so cold in this house. Uh, they were so cold that I remember my sh just getting cold in the wintertime. Just, I mean, it was, you know, the cold was working its way up my, up my feet, through my ankles and into my shins. And I thought, this is just terrible. And I, I've been here 16 years next month and, and I just did it now. And uh, I will say I'll, I buy another house, I will weatherize it first. Yeah. Um, it's, it's quite the way to do it. Um, but I have a, I, I, any questions there? Sally, looks like you had something to ask me maybe? Oh, I was just gonna ask about screen sharing. Um, mm -hmm. I th think you wanna want to do a pr presentation and I want to see if I really know how to do that for you. Okay. Um, but I, but does, do anyone, does anyone have questions before that so while we are all here together? Right. Well, um, I want to see what I need to do here. Let's see here. Oops. Shoot. Oh. doesn't look like I have an ability to do anything on this end yet. I think that if I make you oh, a host for I do, I, a while. It looks like I do have a share screen ability. Let me give it a shot here. Yeah, yeah. sure. Let let's me see. Uh, let's see, what, see I can what happens. Do. Host disable participant screen sharing. So it looks like you might have to enable participant okay. screen sharing there, Sally. Yeah, OK.
<laughs> I just have it say make host. So I'm gonna because it doesn't say if I can make you host for a bit here and see if that helps. Okay. Okay. Looks like I'm the host now. Yeah. So now um do you have does it say screen share at the bottom of your yeah okay oh, go ahead and push on that i think you got it let me know if you can see this yes okay we did it great all right this has been this has been quite the pivot and change for everybody hasn't it learning how to do all this uh <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's quite the change it really is but it's um it's thing and i i think it speaks to human resiliency and i, and I admire that part of it all yeah um so this is a presentation that uh, just offers a little bit of an over, overview of what Efficiency Vermont does and what we offer and kind of who we are. Um, if anybody has any questions throughout it, I'd say just uh, speak up, uh, unmute yourself and ask the question and I'll try to go slow enough to catch your questions. If I need to repeat anything, please let me know and um, I'll try to make this easy for everybody, okay? So a little bit about who we are. Um, we are a statewide energy efficiency utility. We were one of the first energy efficiency utilities in the nation. Our, our, one of our, our jobs, our goals is to reduce the cost of energy for all Vermonters. Um, we help families, businesses, and institutions um, understand and make better use of their, their energy usage, basically. We are a service for all rate payers uh, in the state. So, um, if you if you pay into the electric utility, um, then then we are uh, you are a customer of ours. You could say um, every dollar that's been invested in energy efficiency yields about two dollars in customer savings. Um, so investments Vermonters have made um, in efficiency since 2000. So the past 20 years are saving us over 2.6 billion dollars in energy costs. Uh, we've reduced about uh, 12 million metric tons of CO2e. It's like removing all of Vermont's cars from the roads for about four, four and a half years. Um, so uh, when, when people do uh, make the investment in efficiency, uh, there is a, a long-term payoff uh, and, it, and it tends to pass itself down to the next generation. Um, a little bit about what we're gonna learn here today. Um, who can help us? A little bit about weatherization, a little bit about heat pumps and heat pump water heaters, a little bit about advanced wood heating, smart thermostats, some simple tips, which on the surface seem really simple, but I'll, I'll, I'll offer an integral story with that. A little bit about financing your project. I had to finance my project. It cost me $51 a month. Um, and I think that's a fair price to pay for what I've gotten out of this. And a little bit about our new construction program. Um, so uh, we're here to help people be more comfortable and save some money. And uh, with that, we, we work with a lot of partners. Um, so we have Efficiency Vermont and other energy efficiency utilities. So other energy efficiency utilities, there are others throughout the United States and um, we offer, or we share best practices with them. Um, so it, it's not just us, it's somewhat of a collaborative effort. Um, so uh, in the state of Vermont, there's actually three energy utilities. There's Vermont Gas, there's Burlington Electric Department, and Efficiency Vermont. Um, all of those groups offer some rebates and incentives. Uh, and in terms of being a hub for information, uh, you can call Efficiency Vermont at that number there, 888-921-5990. And we can help uh, any customer in Vermont try to uh, utilize the services of, of, of um, multiple different organizations. Uh, we might provide a, a, a reference or a referral, or we might be able to provide some, some links from a, a website. Your electric utility uh, is also an organization that can oftentimes help people. Uh, right now, I, I see Bristol's in the Green Mountain Power territory. Uh, Green Mountain Power has some incredible incentives uh, right now, whether it's electric lawnmowers to um, uh, electric vehicles, uh, heat pump water heaters, uh, heat pumps for homes, uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of different opportunities for help uh, just from an incentive standpoint, but Green Mountain Power can also help people understand their electric usage a little bit better uh, and help plan for um, a, a different type of future when it comes to their electric use. So they're, they're a great partner out there to be familiar with and, um, and to have on, on, on our side here. 
select credit unions. Um, so the, the credit unions that we've partnered with help people in Vermont take low interest or no interest loans that can be used for energy improvements in their homes or businesses and, um, and, and essentially help people bridge a gap. Uh, oftentimes, um, weatherizing a house, as an example, can be an expensive endeavor. In Vermont, we have the second oldest housing stock in the nation. An average house costs about $8,000 to weatherize, and that can be a lot of money for an average household. So uh, having um, credit union partners allows us to um, leverage some of um, our incentive dollars and, uh, and, and programs to help Vermonters uh, save money without having to put a lot of money up front. Our energy, our efficiency excellence network, and I always call it energy excellence network, but uh, our, our efficiency excellence network. So these are contractors and service providers, independent contractors and service providers. Um, we vet those people and we, we manage them from the standpoint of we, we educate them on our programs, we educate them on the services we offer, and we educate them on the products that we offer incentives on. Uh, and we also bring them into our, our network so that if, if a customer calls and says, I'm looking for a contractor to help me install a heat pump or uh, help me weatherize my home or do an energy audit, we can offer a, a reference. Local store, has anybody seen this uh, smart choice in your, in your local hardware store, Ace Hardware or Obishan perhaps, um, or some other smaller hardware stores? Um, uh, local stores are part of the, the supply chain and um, we, we have some appliances and we have some products in a lot of these stores that um, that are available that are that we've offered some incentive on either at the place of purchase uh, or in arrears post purchase. Um, down here in the corner at marketplace.efficiencyvermont.com that's a really great resource for people to learn about the different products and appliances that are available on the retail or wholesale level. I encourage people to check that out if they're thinking about something for their home. And then we have partnerships with weatherization agencies. Um, Central Vermont Office of Economic Opportunity uh, is covering your, your area of the state there. I think, I think so. Um, it's a Champlain Valley uh, Office of Economic in, uh, Opportunity there. Not, not, uh, not Central. I don't know why I said Central. I apologize. But um, these weatherization agencies uh, work with us and, and they work with um, um, a, a broad range of Vermonters to help weatherize homes and multifamily housing uh, homes. So I, my point is that um, there are multiple different avenues and organizations out there designed to help people become more efficient and more comfortable in their homes or businesses. So a little bit about weatherization. Um, this is a hot topic right now. Sorry for the, I guess the pun there, but um, it, is, it is becoming popular with people because um, there is a tremendous opportunity to save some money. Uh, certainly there's an, a, there's an environmental piece to this, uh, but also it comfort. It, it just, it's more comfortable. You talk to anybody who's weatherized their house and they will tell you that they are just simply more comfortable in their home. So keeping the uh, heat inside in the winter and outside in the summer. So uh, a little bit about weatherization. Uh, weatherization is, is in, in general terms, it's uh, insulating and air sealing. And I wanna, I wanna make note of these two differences here. Um, insulation is, is very much like a sweater that you put on. And when you're inside your home, you're a little chilly, you put a sweater on, it keeps your heat uh, close to your body and makes you comfortable. But if you step outside into a windy condition, oftentimes the cold air is gonna blow right through the sweater. So we would put a shell on top. That's air sealing. Um, when I mentioned that uh, I had done some work in my house, I mentioned that we air sealed all of the attic space first, and then we did the insulation. So when we talk about weatherization, uh, it is a broader term than just air sealing and insulation, but for the purposes of, uh, of, of these discussions, we are talking about air sealing a space and insulating a space. Uh, when you do that, you generally end up with comfort and savings. So uh, a little bit about how to get started in these types of things. I, I'm gonna, I want to reinforce this one green line that popped up here. Um, give us a call for our current offers. Um, our offers change and um, they can sometimes change. Um, you know, they might run a 90 day offer or 180 day offer. Um, but our offers are always changing, so I encourage people to give us a call first. 
but we have um, income eligible weatherization assistance programs for people, for Vermonters. We have comprehensive weatherization for home homes with Energy Star. That's what I did in my house. And we have some limited rebates for uh, do-it-yourselfers. Okay, thank you. So if you're renting, um, we will work with your landlord to take advantage of, of some weatherization opportunities. Again, there's some income eligible weatherization assistance for, um, for landlords. Uh, there is some comprehensive weatherization for um, Energy Star for single family residences. Uh, a little bit of do it yourself uh, for renters, but also building performance, which is a comprehensive weatherization for buildings uh, with multiple <laughs> units. So um, the, the message here is that um, landlords, it would behoove them to contact Efficiency Vermont to learn about some of the opportunities that we have. And if you're a renter, I would encourage you to call us also because we do have some great tips for renters uh, and might have some opportunities that we can discuss with, with, with individuals about um, how we can help, um, help them out as well. I don't know why this is taking off on its own here, but it's moving on its own and I apologize. So comprehensive weatherization, I do wanna say one thing, weatherizing a window, an exterior door, insulating a pipe, that's great do it yourself. When you start talking about comprehensive air sealing in attics, basements, um, insulation in attics or basements and or walls, and then checking the health and safety of your home for the professional guidelines, that's where a professional contractor should be involved. Um, a quick example of where this could all go horribly wrong is that if somebody air seals and uh, insulates their attic space, but they have a, a damp or a moist basement, uh, the moisture in that basement used to escape upward through the house. And if you've air sealed and insulated, that moisture now is gonna stay trapped inside the house and we're gonna have some real bad indoor air quality issues. So it really does behoove people to stop and speak with a qualified contractor before they go ahead and start doing things in their home. There are some things that you might be able to do yourself. Um, we have some instructional videos on our website, um, but ultimately some of this is, is, is bordering on, on scientific, not just, not just rolling out insulation or blowing in cellulose. So it does behoove us to I work with a, a, a qualified contractor. So uh, heat pumps, that's another buzzword right now. Uh, heating and cooling your home uh, in a clean and an efficient manner. And I'll say quietly as well, anybody who's, who's been around a heat pump or has a heat pump will note that they are very quiet in comparison to uh, a window unit air conditioner or sometimes even a, a forced air heating system. Um, so they're powered by increasingly clean electricity, um, but really you can heat your home in the winter and keep them cool in the summer for less than you could with fossil fuels. Uh, a modern heat pump today is good down to about 15 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. Keep the house uh, warm. Um, Efficiency Vermont's stance is that we do recommend that you have a backup heating system regardless. Uh, there's a couple of different types of heat pumps. The one you see here is a split unit. Uh, that's a, a ductless heat pump. Then there's a heat pump water heater. We'll chat about that real quickly. And there's air to water heat pumps and centrally ducted heat pumps. So a centrally ducted heat pump might be something for a large house or a, um, a, a building with many rooms in it. Um, a heat pump water heater, uh, that's a pretty neat little device. We'll talk about that real quick. And the ductless heat pumps, the ones you see pictured are, are by far and large the most popular heat pumps that are out there right now. Um, this is probably what most of us have seen. Um, so this is, a, this is a heat pump water heater. These are really cool because they do two things for us. Um, they use a, a fraction of the electricity that a traditional electric tank water heater would, but they also are a dehumidifier. Um, so while they're heating and extracting heat from, or while they're heating the water through extraction of, of that heat through the air, uh, they're also dehumidifying the space. So these are absolutely, Two in one, two birds with one stone, any way you want to call it. Uh, amazing appliances that, that offer us some incredible um, utilitarian value um, by, by heating water and dehumidifying si simultaneously. These are really cool. I will note that all these pipes should have been insulated. But what are you going to do? Um, so, in terms of heat pump rebates, um, rebates and incentives. Uh, and I should also say for home weatherization are available. Um, I'm gonna pause on the heat pumps real quick and go back to home weatherization. Uh, I should have mentioned, we have incentives that range from up to $2,000 up to $5,500 right now, depending upon your income level. Um, 
these rebates are, are moving. Uh, some of them are going to expire soon. So if anybody's interested in, in doing a home performance with Energy Star project, uh, they can give us a call. We can discuss um, income eligibility and um, see whether or not you might be um, able to capitalize on, on the, uh, the high incentive, the $5,500 incentive. That's, that's uh, for modern income Vermonters. And it allows us to um, cover most of the cost of a, of a home weatherization project. Again, the average is about $8,000 in Vermont, and uh, with a $5,500 incentive, that's covering a massive amount of the cost for weatherizing a home. And that makes the balance uh, an affordable financing option for most people. Um, so back to the heat pumps real quick here. Efficiency Vermont's currently offering about $500 for most heat pumps. Uh, there's also a heat pump incentive being offered through Green Mountain Power. Uh, those two incentives together, um, can, can make a heat pump water heater extremely affordable. Again, they're time limited. Uh, both Green Mountain Power and Efficiency Vermont have time limits on these. So um, what I always recommend people do before you do anything, before you pay anything, before you buy anything, give us a call and we'll talk to you about what the current incentives are and what, what's available to you. Um, let's see here. So wood heat, um, this is, this is a, a very popular option here today. Um, kind of what is it and, and why use it? Um, I think a lot of people think of wood heat as a, uh, either an open hearth style fireplace or a wood stove or a wood pellet boiler or a wood pellet uh, stove. Um, what's pictured here in front of us is a, is a wood pellet boiler and this is a fully automated um, system anymore today. So very efficient uh, combustion. Uh, it's an automated system. By that, it means that the, the hopper uh, is, is feeding the wood pellets to this automatic, automatically. Uh, today, um, the fuel company will show up with a truck just like they would with fuel oil or liquid propane, and they will they'll hook a tube up to your house and they will dump the pellets right into the hopper that's inside your house, and that will automatically load into your boiler. So you don't have to go down there and load and clean ash out and all that kind of stuff. These systems do require a, uh, a, a, a regular maintenance schedule like any other kind of piece of machinery, but um, it, it's not what it was even five or six years ago. Um, wood heating also supports the local economy, um, supporting working forests, and it's keeping uh, all of your fuel dollars in state. Um, that's pretty cool. And um, right now, the, uh, the, the wood heating is offering some stable pricing compared to some of the volatility we see in some of the other markets. Largely because it's local, uh, and largely because it it um, it it's a uh, it's coming, it's it's staying local doesn't have to travel far, um, and it's it's again not as affected by uh, things happening overseas or in other parts of the country. As I mentioned, the bulk delivery um, is really kind of anymore today. You don't have to do the bags, where people get a pallet of bags, they bring the bags inside, they stack the bags. That's still an option. But you can also do bulk delivery where, like I said, just kind of fills up a tank inside your house and the tank uh, is feeding the, the boiler. It's pretty neat. So in terms of options, you have a pellet boiler or a pellet furnace. Um, you know, it, it, it basically hooks up to your existing distribution system um, and you have also pellet stoves. Um, and you don't actually need a chimney for a pellet stove. Uh, you can have a, a flue pipe that terminates on the sidewall of the home. So it allows for some flexibility of installation. And there are rebates for pellet stoves. There are rebates for boilers and furnaces from Efficiency Vermont. Some of our utilities also have rebates for advanced wood heating. Uh, we also offer uh, incentives for basic wood stoves. So if you've got a pre-EPA wood stove and, and you're thinking of getting something more efficient, um, talk to us. We have incentives available if you just want to upgrade your your old-fashioned wood stove to something more modern. Uh, we can help cut the edge off of that of that cost a little bit. Um, smart thermostats. I don't know if anybody's using a smart thermostat yet. Uh, I have a very very early version, but these are cool. They're programmable. Um, you can adjust them from your smartphone. Uh, so uh, you can turn the heat up or turn the heat down from from far away. Maybe you're you're traveling from out of state uh, and you've been away and you've had the house down to 50 degrees and you want it warm when you get home, uh, you could program it or you could just hop on your smartphone and turn the heat up to 68 or 70, whatever it is you want, and the house will be warm by the time you get home. 
Uh, they're also, they call them smart thermostats because they're weather responsive and they're reactive. Um, they learn from behavior. And what that means is that if they realize every day at, uh, you know, 530, um, the house, uh, even though it's been heated to 70 degrees all day, starts taking a dip. And that might be because people are coming home, they're opening doors, they're letting the dog out, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the, the thermostats will recognize this pattern of behavior and they'll try to make adjustments to keep the temperature the same in the house the whole time. Uh, and then they're also weather responsive. They, um, they, they know what the weather outside is. So they know if the mercury is dropping and it's gonna be frigid cold that they might have to turn the heat up a little bit to maintain that temperature in your house. And they kind of learn the, the characteristics of your house. Um, I spoke about coasting earlier, how long a house can stay, can keep its heat before it needs to re regenerate heat. Um, these thermostats can learn that with a house and help help the house be as efficient as possible while, while maintaining the comfort level that you're looking for. We offer incentives on these right now, uh, about $100 on the purchase of a smart thermostat. They're usually about $150 to $200 for a thermostat. So uh, some simple tips. Um, so this is keeping cool in the summer. I think we're running, running a little long in the tooth on, on this part of the presentation for sure, but uh, opening your windows to take advantage of a, of a fresh breeze. Uh, one of the tactics that I've done is, is on the hot, when I see a hot stretch of weather, I'll open all of my windows up at nighttime, draw in as much cool air as possible. And, you know, when I get up in the morning, the sun starts coming up and I start feeling the heat, I'll shut all of my windows. Uh, and it helps, helps reduce the need for me to use any kind of mechanical conditioning. Um, delay heat producing tasks like laundry or washing the dishes until the evening. Uh, this does make a sense. Uh, it does make sense. A dryer running in your house. Um, so let's just say in the previous scenario I offered, we've got the house all cool from the nighttime. We've closed it up. If you run a clothes dryer in your house, it's actually drawing air from inside your space. And when it does that, it's also drawing air from the outside to replenish that air. So ultimately running a dryer on a hot day uh, is, is pulling in warm air from the outside and exhausting all that nice cool air that you just kept inside your house. And, uh, you know, simple things like this, avoid using the oven, uh, try grilling instead kind of a thing. Um, I, I grill year round, so uh, this one's a little different for me, certainly, but, um, you know, not using the oven so much is, is, a, is, a, is a great way to, to not have to mechanically cool the house. Um, I have an exhaust fan above my, my stove and my oven, and when I, run the, um, when I run the oven sometimes in the summertime, I'll turn the exhaust fan on just to draw the excess heat out and away. So basic tips like that can, can help people. Um, it really can be an effective way to, to, um, to reduce the need for any kind of mechanical conditioning. And um, some people don't realize that some of these basic tips are, are out there. We have a whole section on our website of, of have a bunch of basic tips and little videos uh, and little um, stories that people can read and watch that might help them realize some, some really simple energy savings in their homes without having to make any kind of financial investments whatsoever. So financing, um, you know, upgrading your home without that upfront cost. So this is our home energy loan program. We're working with three lenders right now, um, Vermont State Employees Credit Union, Opportunities Credit Union, and NeighborWorks of Western Vermont. Um, there's no minimum amount on the loan and borrowers can borrow, homeowners can borrow up to $40,000. Businesses can borrow more. Um, and you can see depending upon the household income, you see the loan term chart here on the left-hand side. Um, but eligible products would be anything from weatherization and heat pumps and water heaters, the wood heating and a whole slew of efficient appliances. So in a scenario, somebody might be able to weatherize their home and upgrade their appliances in one umbrella loan. Uh, and if their income happens to be below $60,000 and they wanna finance it for 10 years, the interest rate would be 1.99%. Um, right now, for a limited time, Efficiency Vermont is offering Vermonters with uh, household incomes of less than $90,000. Um, six months of payment are up to $900 being made for the, uh, the applicant by Efficiency Vermont. So I wanna go back to the, uh, the modern income scenario for weatherization. Uh, there's a $5,500 incentive for weatherization right now. If that was coupled with a home energy loan where Efficiency Vermont makes the first six payments or $900 worth of them, 
that's a total of $6,400 towards the weatherization of the house. That, that is unprecedented and very unlikely to be seen again. It is time limited. And I would encourage people, if they're interested at all, to please give us a call and have a conversation with us. We have a similar kind of a program for businesses right now. The interest rates are three and a half to five and a half percent. You can borrow up to $50,000. And um, we have four months of deferred payments for businesses available right now. So they can make some energy Im improvements right now and they don't have to worry about paying back on that loan for four months. And new construction. Um, we just did a, a webinar with the uh, Addison County Regional Planning Commission. I think I think you were on that one, right, Sally? And um, we, we saw uh, a little bit about our new construction opportunities, but um, essentially efficiency offers access to technical expertise. And um, I think that's really important because if, if you embark on a project like this, you get a lot of different um, authorities out there that can offer great input and advice. Um, we're, we're one of the only people out there that can do it without selling you anything. Uh, we're an impartial third party when it comes to that. So when we, when we offer technical advice or expertise to anybody about any project, we don't have any skin in that game. We don't have any, we're not going to make any money any way, shape or form. Um, so we're offering um, very transparent advice based on uh, technical expertise and 20 years of data and knowledge. When it comes to new construction, we're offering $3,000 back in incentives uh, to, get, to get you into an Efficiency Vermont uh, certified home. So we always like to say there are no bad ways to start saving. Um, I, I wanna mention a couple of the resources um, to people, um, but when it comes to no bad ways of saving, even a, you know, like a door sweep on the bottom of your door, I think one of your testimonials there earlier mentioned that they put door sweeps on um, I, I've used the plastic window stuff, the window film you put on the inside of your windows, the inexpensive stuff down at Ace Hardware, made a tremendous difference in how much air would move through the space and that brought a lot of comfort. So there's great ways to save energy uh, and improve comfort in people's homes, sometimes with little or no investment. Um, and while we can help with like basic efficiency needs, we cannot assist with electricity generation like solar or transportation needs. Um, we, we can't help with solar. Um, Renewable Energy Vermont can help with a lot of um, uh, solar or wind or battery storage types of projects or questions. Drive Electric Vermont is offering information and resources on electric vehicles and charging stations. And Go Vermont uh, offers information on commuting options, including transit and ride share. So there's some opportunities there that are that are beyond the scope of, of, of our purview, but uh, again, working with partners throughout the state, uh, we're trying to bring some of this information together so that we can help all Vermonters save, save some energy and improve the quality of their life. And um, that's the end of that's the end of my presentation. I'm going to leave this slide up for a minute until until you want me to pull it down. But um, I do want to thank the Bristol Energy Committee for hosting this. Um, I happen to live in uh, Moortown, so you guys are right over the mountain from me, and. Um, I, I love to go paddling over in uh, Bristol Pond or Winona Lake as it was formerly called. And uh, I, I enjoy going through Bristol. I always have um, for past 20 years, I've always enjoyed going through Bristol. I love the downtown. I love the, the older historic homes. It's a, it's a beautiful town and village. So I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak with you all. Thank you so much, Brad. Yeah. Thank sure. you, Brad. You're welcome. I Is really, it okay? I really appreciate that this has been, um, recorded so that we can use it to help people understand because right. it, it it really helps to have this all in one place and be able to have people hear these and, and re-look at it you know they can reverse it we hear it again whatever yeah so we'll make sure we get it out to people good good the one the one piece i would say there is just to be careful that um a lot of the the programs and incentives change regularly so um my my recommendation always is to Give us a call or check out the website. Okay. Okay. Should I stop sharing my screen? Yeah, sure. Then we can all see each other. Did everyone get any numbers they wanted? Yep. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Okay. Now, do I hand this back to you, Sally, or do you have control again?
It looks like I can reclaim host. <laughs> so I'll do okay. that. All right. All right. And uh, all right. Um, does anyone have questions for Brad? Um, well, Brad, one, one thing, oh, go ahead. Brad, on the first screen, uh, I wanted to get the title. It was you plus efficiency. What was the rest of it? Let's take a look here. Give me one moment. It was you plus efficiency equals savings and comfort. Great. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, um, Brad, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, how to connect homeowners with contractors. One of the things that I myself have run up against um, wanting to make uh, comprehensive uh, weatherization improvements is finding someone who will do the work and getting them to actually commit to it. And I know you have lists, and I and I know um, everybody's very busy right now, especially given the incentives that are out there. Um, but if you could just talk a little bit about how to how homeowners can get connected with contractors during a very busy weatherization time. Yeah, sure. And and you're right about that. As winter comes, it gets even busier as people start thinking about the the oil truck backing up into the driveway again. They hear the beep. Beep, beep, and they know it's just money out of their pocket. So this is the busier season for this. Um, there, there are two ways. Um, there is a, there's, a, there's a great selection tool on our website, but I'm gonna tell you that I think the best way is to actually call our customer service folks and have a discussion, have a conversation about what exactly it is you're looking for. Um, everybody has unique needs. Everybody is looking for maybe something a little different. And I think when you go to the website, we can help with filtering and, and we can get you into a, a contractor that's familiar with our financing programs, but maybe you don't need financing. Maybe this isn't, a, you know, that's not your challenge. So maybe that's not important. I honestly believe the best way to find a contractor is to call us and have a discussion with us about what it is you're looking for and the type of project you might be, you might be thinking about. Um, honestly, Stephen, a lot of folks, um, they don't know where to start. This is a, this is, this is kind of a, um, th these can be big projects. They can be intimidating. Um, some folks might think, well, it's better to replace the dryer than it is to insulate the attic. Um, that's a conversation we can have, and then we can point people in the, into the, the direction of the, of the right contractor for those services. Um, those contractors that we have on the list are people that we are, um, we're working with and we're checking up on, you could say, uh, in the sense that we want to make sure that the customer experience is a positive one for people we make referrals to. So we want to make sure that those contractors are super familiar with our programs. They're familiar with our incentives. They're, they're familiar with the supply chain network and they have a good inroad into our, they have access to our, uh, the, the folks that help manage the programs internally. Um, I, would, I would advise anybody to call our toll free number and speak with our customer service people directly about their needs, their location and what it is they're looking to do. And, and our, I think our people can offer a good, a good list of referrals that way. That's great. Thank you very much, Brad. That's helpful. I wonder if you could, would it be possible for you to just lay out that um, toll-free number right here on, on the screen, or, or at least verbally, so people that are watching this or might in the future could um, have it? Is that possible? To... Yeah. I, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'll, I'll repeat it a couple of times here. Great. Um, it's 888-921- as a clock as a clock strikes eight, <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll repeat that again. It's eight 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 nine two one five nine nine zero. I think our folks are there from about eight o'clock in the morning uh, till about five o'clock in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. Okay. Thanks very much, Brad. Appreciate sure, it. You're Brad, I need I need to uh, go off on another Zoom meeting. Um, so I'm going to disconnect and Sally, I'm sorry I have to do that. Um, but thanks so much. This has been very helpful. You're welcome. Oh, you're muted there, Sally.
Thanks, Brad. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, um, yeah, you did a good job if we don't have any questions. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of information there and um, I, I, I can't, you know, I, I own this house for 15 years before I did any weatherization and I worked for Efficiency Vermont for four. So even working for Efficiency Vermont, I found this to be kind of a, you know, it's like, where do I start? What do I do? And, and I have all the internal resources at my fingertips. Um, a lot of conversations. It was a lot of uh, learning, a lot of material review. But uh, in the end, um, talking to uh, folks that I work with were really super helpful and helped me manage this project and, and, and get it done. Um, so I, I, I would never I would never expect anybody to rely on on just themselves to do these types of projects, uh, and even understanding, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, an energy efficient dryer. Um, you know, oftentimes when you go on the internet to to, to research a product or appliance, there's a lot of um, paid or supported advertising or articles that are out there um, to try to support a particular appliance or technology. And we don't have anything like that. You're gonna if you call Efficiency Vermont, you're gonna get a very unbiased opinion. It's going to be based on the technology and the track record for that technology and the listing organizations uh, and experiences that we've had with it. So, um, you know, part of why I encourage people to contact us is because we're, we're there to have that conversation with people. Brad, just uh, as you, you recommended, you know, contacting Efficiency Vermont directly by phone for recommendation on a contractor. Um, I've looked at your website in the past for like um, freezer or uh, or clothes dryer or something like that, and honestly, the the list was kind of overwhelming. So, would you recommend the same thing of just calling Efficiency Vermont directly and and getting some some guidance that way? Yeah, Carl, I, I think I would. I, you know, one of the things I might do is go to that marketplace.efficiencyvermont.com. I think that was designed to help streamline some of this and make it a little bit less overwhelming. But um, I think if, if, if a customer has an opportunity to take a peek at that first and then give us a call after taking a look at that, I think it can be a pretty, uh, we can make it as easy as possible for sure. Great. But you're right. it, is, it is very overwhelming. It's, it's, there's so much out there. Yeah. Um, I have a question about um, how to connect with people in the community pretty quickly to help move um, to help to help them think about doing that doing a uh, weather addition. So you said the best way to go is really talking about the comfort as mm -hmm. a as something that um, people really can connect to the mm -hmm. comfort of their home. Um, do you have any other tips on getting the word out? Well, you know, I think that um, I, I think that I'm a state utility. I'm going to say to people, hey, um, weatherizing your house is a great idea. Um, in part, that, that's part of our mission to help Vermont reduce their energy use. But um, I may not be somebody that you know. I may not be somebody that you explicitly trust. Okay. But um, you may trust more a friend, a relative, or a neighbor. Right. So my, my recommendation, I've seen uh, energy committees do this before where, and this was pre-COVID, don't, don't do this during COVID, anybody. But um, um, people used to have open houses. So if somebody had done a weatherization project on their house, the energy committee would arrange for a, an open house from like 10 till one or 10 till two, refreshments were served. And the homeowner uh, would highlight the project that they'd done in the house and kind of the results that they had. Um, you know, ultimately when, when people can see that a friend or a neighbor or a relative, somebody just down the street from them has completed a project, uh, and hear that person explain the differences that they're noting, whether it's the financial impact or the comfort impact, um, that makes a, a big difference. Um, so like right now coming up is the button up campaign. Um, you know, the button up campaign is a, a fantastic awareness campaign for the, uh, for the community. Uh, and it's, it has a really cool offer in it, which is that Efficiency Vermont will offer residents a virtual walkthrough of the home. Um, so it's, it's utilizing a smartphone or a tablet 
and the uh, the homeowner walks through the home with the with the tablet and is connected to one of our engineers and the engineer asks questions about different aspects of the house and that gives a homeowner kind of a a broad view of, of what's happening from a technical standpoint and it helps them prioritize where they might want to start with a project um, so that's a that's a great opportunity and it's a great advantage of the uh, the button up campaign that's something I might consider uh, and then like I say um, once the, the the COVID is under control um, we might be able to have um, house tours again um, and in lieu of a house tour you know a video testimonial from a, a homeowner who has done a weatherization project or upgraded their their washer and their dryer um, video testimonials are really really effective and if the if the town energy committee has a website or a social media platform having a a slew of video testimonials that you build uh, over the course of a couple of months for, from residents neighbors and friends that are talking about, hey you know we got a heat pump water heater and this thing's amazing because it keeps up with our demand it's quiet and it's dehumidifying our basement. So we got to get rid of the dehumidifier too. When, when a neighbor sees another neighbor say that, that's, that's got weight to it, it really does. So um, even with COVID, um, practicing that human resiliency and, and, and adaptability, getting out there and having a video testimonial on your social media feed can be a great way to help people see what this is like when they do these types of projects or engage in uh, energy efficiency uh, practices or purchases. Great idea. Thank you. You're welcome. I saw Carl writing it down and he's our, he's our man for the website, I believe. So that's great. Um, so yeah, that's great. Um, thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Any other questions? You can, you can, Well, I guess you're free to go <laughs> if you want. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, Brad. You're absolutely welcome. It was my pleasure. Um, if there's anything that I can do for the uh, Energy Committee in Bristol, um, you'll have my contact information. I encourage you to give me a buzz. Um, Great. Happy to, to help and, and, and help leverage some of our, our products and services to help uh, Vermonters be more comfortable and save some money. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much, Brad. Really sure, appreciate it. Sure, you're welcome. It. My pleasure. Have a great night, everybody. Great job. Great job. Yeah, Thank have you. a good trip. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Bye now. Bye-bye. All right, that was great. Um, so uh, let's move along with our thing here. Um, I was thinking he was going to be telling us all about button-up, but that's later. So what we just saw was different than I thought, but I can see how it's gonna be really handy for helping people understand weatherization more to have this on video, so I'm glad. Um, so, so for our plan of reaching out to people, we're, we're gonna learn more about the button up a little bit later, but for right now, it's these incentives that are, are really, high right now really great and button up is not going to have those later so it's not we can't really wait for button up to get this information out as fast as possible because these incentives are supposed to end on august 31st they will probably go longer because they if they haven't been used up but who knows how long just they go until they are used up and so um i think the that uh I think that putting this on front porch forum and letting people know about it and also just writing a little um, in that about the actual incentives that he mentioned would be handy. Um, any other ideas? Well, putting it up on the uh, website, if that's possible as well, a link, a link to the um, presentation that um, Brad just gave would be great, if possible. Yeah. So right on the web page on the town energy thing, right? And then Carl, what do you have going on for options? Well, I just <clears throat> may I note myself the redo media blitz for uh, VEIC incentives. Um, and um, I feel like kind of running out of time tonight, but um, I'll type it up and share it with everyone else in the committee of just 
I think all the venues that we could use to get the word out there. Uh, so yes, Front Porch Forum, uh, and yes, our website uh, and our Facebook page, um, but something in the as an independent, something in the yeah, eagle, um, you know, just doing a blitz with it. Um, maybe having a Twitter account, which I know very little about, but it might be worth looking into. <laughs> I know nothing. Uh, and, and Instagram, like my kids, my teenagers, and most like twenty-year-olds, they don't use Facebook. Um, they're on Instagram. They're on. Um, they're on Instagram. Um, so you know, finding, just finding all the platforms that people of all ages are accessing and uh, getting the word out that way. Um, so I'll I'll write something up um, of all the, all the venues, all the platforms uh, that I think we could uh, could look at. Um, Carl, also it's, you know, I, I said VEIC, but really people are thinking about Efficiency Vermont. So I'd say mm -hmm. put EVT or Efficiency Vermont yeah. so they'll recognize who it is. Good point. What, one um, thought comes to mind with respect to uh, the, the incentives and the time limitation on them. Um, would be to make sure people understand that in some form or another, there are going to be more incentives even after these expire. And the main thing they can do um, is get going and yeah. make some contacts, yeah. get it educated. And even if they don't um, line everything up for the current very advantageous incentives, at least, um, they're in the pipeline and, and yeah. they're they're educated, they, they're gonna learn what they need to do and they're gonna have the contact with Efficiency Vermont and support in finding a contractor. Yeah. Um, so really yeah. it's taking that first step mm. that we we need to encourage people to do and, and not to think too much about the fact that the incentives are gonna uh, expire sometime soon. Yeah. Um, because they, they, Great point. some form or another, they're gonna be renewed. Yeah, that's a great point, Stephen. And I wish I'd thought of this while Brad was still on the line, but would, would, um, could you ask him if he'd be willing to share that slideshow <clears throat> with you so that, <clears throat> excuse me, so that we, uh, the members of the Energy Committee could uh, refer back to it? Well, I think that we can through Neat TV. Uh-huh. You so know, like... We can we can play what we just saw by going to Neat TV and, and watching this recording that that Sean is has done. Right. Um, sure. I just if, if Brad is willing to share the the file with us rather than fast forwarding through the video, okay. we can I just, see what you're know, saying. zoom through the slideshow. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I think checking with him about that I I think is a good idea. See see right. if if he's willing then then it could be put up on, are you saying then put it up on the web page? Whatever he's comfortable with. Um, yeah. Put it on the web page, you know, with disclaimer that this information could be out of date in, you know, uh, three weeks, a month, whatever. Um, but even if we could just have it in our files for reference. I see. Then they, then they wouldn't have to start at the beginning of the meeting and wait for us. Although the testimonies were kind of good for them to hear from other residents. True. Yeah. But either way, if you feel like that's a great idea, I'd say give them a call and, and ask them about it. Okay. I'll call them on that. Yeah. And I mean, basically that's good for you too, because you're the one who could actually put it on the webpage probably or Ian, either one. Yeah, I'm going to work more, more with you. Ian and see if he can, would be willing to kind of let <laughs> one of us, i.e. me, um, have more direct control over the website. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. I'll have, I'll have a conversation with him. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Well, um, we we really don't have a lot much, a lot more to go because one of the things was uh, Richard giving some upcoming legislative information and 
he's just gone to another meeting that's all about that right now. So, so. Um, I do have is, one quick update about the library. We talked about oh, great. checking out the possibility of window inserts in the library. And there are already storm windows in one form or another on all of the windows in the library. Oh, uh, wow. A lot of them on the really big windows, those old timey exterior storm windows, the aluminum. Yeah. Crack. Uh, and then at the very top, those rectangular windows, um, there's some kind of storm window that was put on a long time ago. And, and uh, according to Coco, the new librarian, they've been painted in place. Okay. So, Great. yeah. So apparently, all the windows uh, have some kind of storm window on them in the library. Excellent. Thank you for checking into that. That's great to know. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, yeah, and um, if I could uh, add to that, um, Carl, I apologize for not getting back to you on your inquiry about um, possibly doing some inserts there. Um, but that was my recollection because I walked through one time in the past and then right around the same time you inquired, I also received an email from um, the, the local coordinator over in Thetford, Bob Walker, um, and they have actually put together, they have identified something like 150 windows in their um, community school wow. that they want to build inserts for. Huh. Uh, which is great um, and it's ambitious um, considering that window dressers is in fact, you know, completely next their program for this year. So I'm not sure how they're gonna do it other than I can say that they are going to come and get all the stuff um, wow. that's stored here. They're gonna come get all the jigs and the supplies and all that and so yeah sometime i think in the next i don't know few weeks it'll probably all that stuff is going to go away okay. um, from bristol and then we will have to um, make a plan for what comes next and you know in consultation with window dressers as to their plans for next year yeah so Great. that that's where that stands thank you for that update sure yeah, yeah. um and is there any, do we need to do anything to help that transfer happen? Or are they just going to come with some people in a big van and take it all away? Yeah, they're just going to come and get it. I've offered to help them uh, load it. It's in my shed. It's easy access. Okay. Um, and uh, the only other thing I need to do is, is uh, inventory the supplies, the plastic, the tape, the screws, and all wow. that stuff so that they will know um, how much they will need to add in addition, if any. So, yeah. and probably okay. evict the mice from the boxes, huh? <laughs> yeah, and check to see if the glue froze, which actually it didn't because it's in my boiler room. So, hmm. yeah. anyways, um, that's okay. where that stands. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, I guess I think that it look it really does seem like during this COVID time that doing things electronically to connect with people and have places for people to go is is really handy. So, um, you know, we're starting to build up things like electric bike information, electric vehicles, you know, and now weatherization stuff. And so it, it'll be great to get solid on whatever we have and not get too spread out so because we're gonna have to keep up with this stuff too and i know that i'm certainly completely incapable of doing that kind of thing so it's what what you feel like you have energy for and you know and the people who well it's probably all ages but mostly um the people who are not the brand new twitters or instagrams as much as people who use things that they've been using for a long time like facebook or you know we'll go to a web page or something like that but who knows i don't know how fast things are changing but um, anyway i guess talking with ian and getting a real clarity there about how to manage things would be good 
Yeah, I'm, I'm making a note to get in contact with him. Right. I'm also aware that you are right in the beginning of school too, and that's pretty hard to do a lot of things because you're busy. Yeah, it, we, we have uh, usually we have a week of in service getting ready for school. We have about three weeks now. We you know school won't start until September eighth, um, so it uh, it hasn't hit the fan yet. Um, but it, <laughs> okay, great. It's it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Carl, I was wondering, have, have you, um, it just occurred to me that other energy committees must have web pages, not all of them, but some of them. Yeah. And I wonder, um, have, have you taken a look at any of those? If maybe that would be helpful um, yeah. for ideas? Yeah, I have. And actually, it's, uh, there's a, you know, it's a clearinghouse for um, Vermont um, energy committees. And uh, a lot of them have, um, email addresses and phone numbers, but surprisingly few have um, mm. websites, mm. which I thought was interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would say that maybe a quarter of them have websites. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, so, uh, but I have looked at some of those and there's some, there is some interesting stuff going on out there. Huh. Yeah. And is, um, is, does the Clearinghouse um, make a note of which ones have websites or is that sort of, you know, search uh, it out and to get a scroll through. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is that VCAN? Yes. Yeah, it's been a while since I looked at that. That's ringing a bell. Vermont yeah. Energy that's and Climate Action, something or other. Yeah, yeah okay. I have the link somewhere. But yeah, yeah, the VCAN. Um, yeah. All right. So, are we good, you think? I think we are. I, I also have another <laughs> Zoom call at 8.30. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to take off. All right. Thanks, Carl, for being here. You're welcome. Yeah, Great to see you both. Thanks a lot, Carl. Thanks. Good to see you. And yeah. uh, good to see you, too, Sally. Thank you. Yeah. Great to see you. As, as always. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll be in touch. Okay. All right. Hope to see good you around morning. town. <laughs>